Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our latest edition of our PwC Basel 4 channel. Today, again, with a topic out of the area of market price risk, the title of our today's episode is FRTB Fundamental Review of the Trading Book non mutable Risk Factors. Please give me the possibility to introduce myself, uh, maybe... Um, some of you know me already from uh, past editions of the Basel 4 channel. My name is Martin Eisen. I'm a partner at PwC here in Frankfurt, leading here the regulatory management department. And apart from that, I'm also leading the global Basel 4 initiative of PwC. Again, like always, today I'm not alone. I have two international experts with me. Maybe Luis Guillaume, would you like to introduce yourself? My name is Luis Prezers. I'm, I'm a director in, uh, in, in PwC London. Um, I, I'm a part of the, the risk and, regula and regulation practice. Um, I also have some responsibilities within the Basel IV um, um, team that Martin runs, and I'm part of the workstream uh, internal models. And I'm Guillaume Magdalens, a manager in the Belgium office, uh, and, and I'm also a Warstream member of the Basel IV Market with Internal Model Initiative. Thank you very much, Luis. Thank you very much, Guillaume, for the quick introduction. Um, before we start with the, with the presentation, maybe you give me quickly the possibility to give a quick introduction to the overall topic of Basel IV and especially FRTB. Um, as you might know, the term Basel IV officially does not exist. Uh, supervisors still speak about the finalization of Basel III, while Basel III was mostly focusing on um, uh, the regulatory capital and changes in regulatory capital. What we consider as Basel IV is more focused on changes in the methodology for the calculation of risk-weighted assets. And here we see changes both um, in the internal models and also in the standardized um, models, uh, standardized approaches, sorry. Um, and also, of course, um, uh, it doesn't matter if we are here speaking about credit risk, market risk, or operational risk. Um, almost all methods for the calculation of risk weighted assets will be changed under Basel IV. And um, there are many different topics for credit risk. For example, we have changes in the standardized approach for credit risk. We have changes in the IRB approach. For derivatives, we have the changes in the calculation of exposures. In the uh, SACA approach, we have changes for the CVA risk capital charge. Um, but also we have some other types of risk, like for securitization and step-in uh, risk, we have uh, changes in the methodology for the calculation of capital requirements. And last but not least, uh, one of the major topics is, of course, the fundamental review of the trading book with the uh, changes in the calculation of capital requirements for market risk. And that will be also the topic for us today. And um, to give you a quick overview, there are two important changes in the FRTB for the calculation of capital requirements for market risk. The first one is the change of the trading book boundary, which means um, there will be in the future a more objective definition and more objective requirements on uh, which positions should be assigned to the trading book and which one should be assigned to the banking book. Um, the second important topic is the changes in the standardized approach. In the future, we will have a sensitivity-based approach, which is um, definitely more complex, but also much more risk-sensitive compared to the old standardized approaches. And last but not least, we have new requirements for the internal models here. We see the uh, shift from the value risk models to the expected shortfall models. And our today's topic, the non-modable risk factors, is a part uh, of the new requirements for the internal models. And as we will hear later in the presentation, it's a quite complex topic. But now I would like to hand over to our experts that give an overview about the agenda of today and then, of course, start with the, with the speech. Please. Thank you, Martin. Today's agenda is focusing on a key technical aspect of the new internal model approach foreseen under FRTB, meaning the non modable risk factors. And today we will try to demystify what are the non modable risk factors and how they affect the market risk capital requirements 
Finally, we will provide you insight on the challenges and opportunities you might encounter when dealing with non malleable risk factors. The notion of non malleable risk factors is closely related to the development of an internal model for market risk, which aims at modeling the evolution of risk factors such as interest rate, equity price, ethics, etc., based on observable historical data. But in case of missing data or lack of liquidity, such modelable risk factors are not straightforward to include in the model, and the regulator makes a difference between risk factors considered as modelable that will be captured under the expected shortfall framework and a risk factor considered as non-modelable that will contribute to the capital requirement by means of stress scenarios. The regulator provides two criteria to qualify risk factor as modelable, other risk factors being treated as non-modelable ones. First, the data should reflect a read price, which means the institution should have conducted a transaction or have a view on very favorable price of an actual transaction between arm length parties. Or finally, obtain a price for committed quotes or for third party vendors uh, reflecting the conditions, the conditions already mentioned. The second criteria for eligibility of modelable risk factors is the availability of continuous data, meaning the institution should have at least 24 observable real price per year and the maximum period between two consecutive observations should not be longer than one month. All other risk factors will be considered as non-modelable ones. To illustrate this principle, we provide you below some, below some example of risk factors and basis risk factors. Basis risk factors being the result of the decomposition of a risk factor between a principal component and a basis risk. Those non modelable risk factors can be relevant for all asset class. For example, for the credit risk asset class, a credit spread for smaller names or long tenors of credit spreads or even volatility of those spreads could be deemed as non-observable and therefore non modelable risk factors. Could be the same for part of the swap, swaption cube um, of interest rate or CMS correlation parameters. Looking into basis risk factors, um, industry aims that most likely those basis risks um, will not qualify for the modelability criteria and, and will be treated separately as non modelable risk factors. Now we have a better view on how to determine whether a risk factor is classified as non modelable risk factor, we can have a look at the capital requirement of those risk factors. The capital charge of non modelable risk factors resulting from a stress scenario are aggregated with other internal model capital charge as the maximum of the sum of the internal model capital charge and the stress scenario loss or the leverage of the average of internal model capital charge and the average of stress scenario losses. From a calculation perspective, all idiosyncratic credit risk risk factor losses have to be calculated separately. Um, and then should be aggregated according to a prescribed formula that do not recognize uh, correlation factors between the non-modelable risk factors. Having a clear view on the definition and capital impact of non-modelable risk factors, we can highlight several challenges and opportunities financial institutions will face. First, the correlation. Correlation is not recognized between non-modelable non risk factors which lead to a very conservative and potentially penalizing estimate. Secondly, the challenges related to proxies, where the primary risk factors could be very uh, illiquid but potentially highly correlated with a more liquid risk factor. In such case, a suitable choice of proxy risk factor and decomposition leading to a basis risk can lead to a reduction of the capital impact of the stress scenario. If, if, I, if I may just add something here, uh, Guillaume, um, uh, one, of, one, of, one of the main challenges uh, on, of, of the FRTB uh, programs uh, actually are non-moral risk factors, and because of, of the capital, uh, how capital intensive they are, many, many, many firms are, are, because they are so capital intensive and there is no the, uh, diversification benefit, um, they are actually removing um, the debt, debt uh, uh, deep dive analysis on the moral risk factors and creating different programs, uh, uh, parallel programs, just to resolve 
the, the normal risk factor in terms of methodology, in terms of data, in terms of processes and infrastructure. So it's very, very expensive, and and, they, and banks are actually hiring very specific individuals to resolve uh, uh, these issues because they are so uh, capital intensive is one of the, the the main areas of concern within within the program. You're totally right, Luis. And looking to more details to the first challenge, being the correlation challenge, one can one can think about the case of an interest rate curve where different tenors are usually highly correlated despite some of the points uh, might not be liquid enough to satisfy the criteria of modelable risk factor, which could lead to an overestimation of the capital impact where those points, usually strongly correlated, would be treated individually and lead to an overestimation of the capital requirement for a well-hedged book. Potential alternatives put in place uh, within the industry are, are twofold. On one side, institutions are working on the existing risk factors and try to find a more appropriate aggregation techniques, for example, taking larger tenor buckets. However, they should find the right balance between uh, such aggregation techniques as it could result in the multiplication of basis risk to be treated then as non modular risk factors. Alternatively, institutions can enhance their source of market data via data pooling solution or additional data provider sources? That's, that's a very good point, that the, the, the last one that you mentioned. So banks, large banks, uh, uh, is very often and probably a bit surprising to many people that data are, 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 is scattered, so market data is scattered across the bank. Sometimes they don't have uh, uh, one uh, pool or golden source where all of these it comes comes together and, 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 and can be uh, used, utilized. So what banks are actually doing are creating golden sources. Uh, all these market data that are scattered around the bank uh, uh, are, 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 are combined, so they have a better chance to, 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 to move from non-modelable to modelable with the data that they have in-house. Exactly, Luis. Looking into more detail to the second challenges, which is minimizing the impact of non modelable risk factors related to proxy, it is often observed, as for example for the bond spread, that could be decomposed between a proxy of same name CDS or index CDS, which could be considered as modelable, and a less volatile bond CDS spread, which would be considered then as non modelable risk factors. Once again, the choice of the proxy would be a key element in the minimization of the capital impact. That's, that's, that's very true. And, and again, some insights from the industry. Uh, the, 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 the first stage is really, is really to find the right data that will allow for, for as many risk factors as possible to be modelable. That's the first stage. And once you sort that out, whatever you are left off, uh, you, will do, you will try to reduce that capital associated with those non moral risk factors by proxying. So proxying is very important. It is a second step. That's how banks are, are, are um, uh, tackling the, the issue. Exactly, Luis. And, and when looking at proxying, financial institutions should find the right balance. Again, taking our example of the bond spread, uh, a balance should be found between a proxy of single name CDS or CDS index, uh, considering both advantage and disadvantage. For example, of the single name CDS, the smaller basis to bond spread and the lower basis volatility could lead to a, a, a less penalizing capital requirement. However, the lower liquidity of such single name CDS could increase uh, the risk of the proxy to become itself non modelable On the other side, the CDS index would have higher liquidity and therefore increase the certainty that the risk factors would remain modelable. The main drawback being that the CDS index would most likely have a higher volatility and therefore represent a higher capital requirement. As a conclusion, we can highlight that the choice of proxy would be um, that, that the choice of the proxy would be a key element while reducing uh, while optimizing the capital charge of non modelable risk factors. That's that's very true. That's very true. But one one insight again is 
um, this is a very this is a very dynamic process, and every month is um, is, is is different. So uh, many risk factors might uh, uh, fall into modelable and non-modelable, and 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 the, the 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 chosen proxies might fall into modelable and non-modelable as you move along. So being a, a dynamic process. Uh, as, you, as, as time passes by, you need to have a, a mechanism to, to, to identify uh, uh, proxies and then default proxies because uh, 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 they, they drop in and out of modulability. So that's, that's one, 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 one process that needs to be in place. Um, so to summarize, uh, the last slide that we have is, so non risk factors are are, are, are a, a, a very important component and portion of the capital to, say, to, to market risk. Um, and, and because it's so expensive uh, in terms of capital, many, many desks will be hit uh, harder than, than others. So deep dives and an, the analysis on, on, on what you have in terms of pool of risk factors and what, what modulability they have is essential now. So you can make decisions on optimizing your desks Based on you know moving to IMA versus standardized, etc. Um, uh, optimization is is key here because once you you have many ways of optimizing, you can get the golden sources to improve your your modulability uh, possibility, uh, but also uh, the proxies and and the default proxies uh, and and the second the second lines as well. So all of that optimization and and automated process need to be in place uh, to optimize the capital. And um, also, finally, it's, it's, uh, non borrowing factors is also linked to any uh, other aspects of FRTB. For example, the, the, the back testing and, 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 and the PNL attribution tests. So they are all in interrelated. So this needs to be once you are optimizing your capital across your desks, you, you need to, to look at, at those interdependencies uh, in order to optimize the business, the capital, etc. So uh, very complex. Uh, uh, um, um, uh, attention re is, is, is required, and, and, uh, and otherwise you will be hit uh, hard in terms of capital. Yeah, thank you very much, Luis. Thank you very much, Guillaume. That was really an um, impressive presentation and sounds really complicated and, and challenging. Um, maybe a few words um, in the end i think um, what is very important when we talk about the non modulable risk factors is that they are relevant for all banks that are using internal models for market risk um, but the extent of uh, how difficult the challenge is and and um, how big the problems for the the consideration of these non modable risk factors differs from a bank to bank so it's very important to make an, an analysis how important the topic is because there's also definitely a huge potential of optimization and also therefore to reduce the future capital requirements under FLTB or Basel 4. Thanks a lot again to the speakers, Luis, Guillaume, Ridi. It was a wonderful presentation. I would like also to um, thank you, my, my listeners, my guests, uh, for your attention. And I hope uh, we hear soon again in the next episode of the Basel 4 channel. Yeah, maybe in the end, please give me the possibility also to raise your attention to two publications, two recent publications of POC experts. Um, both books are called Basel IV, one is in German edition, the other one is in English edition. Um, this uh, Basel IV book is the first of its kind, it's the first global publication on this topic and covers all topics that we are also covering in our Basel IV channel, but of course uh, much more in detail and also with uh, some examples for the calculation. Uh, we cover um, all three major risk types, um, market risk, credit risk and operational risk and both always the standardized approaches and the internal models. Apart from that, we also give um, further details on a new disclosure requirements, uh, requirements for the calculation of uh, risk weighted assets for investment funds. We have uh, the capital floors and all of these um, articles in this book uh, cover the latest rumors coming from the Basel Committee and should be close to the final regulation that will be published um, this year. So if you're interested to go a little bit more into detail, I can um, definitely recommend you um, these two books, one in the English version and the other one in the German version.
Thank you very much.